So today we're gonna to be talking about live streaming and how that came to be. I specifically wanna focus in on Twitch when I'm talking about this, as Twitch is such a large platform and so many people really use it to this day. So I really have a love-hate relationship with Twitch as it is something I've used in the past and not to any success. If anything, it's pretty fucking cringe. It was back when I played League of Legends with my buddies. Come on, give me the panda! Give me the panda! Right, give me the panda! <laughs> that clip is five years old there, and I really can't tell anything besides a prepubescent Ryan screaming, gimme and pentakill there. There is a whole side of Twitch that I really hate and don't like. If I'm staying up to date with what's, you know, uh, controversial right now is Alinity, who if you don't know who that is, that's probably for the better, but she's a Twitch streamer who initially rose to fame when she uh, fed her cat vodka, and on top of that, she threw her cat on stream, is now back in the, the controversial limelight due to her accidentally having a nip slip on stream. I don't know why I just did that, because it happened. While I really don't think it's a big deal what happened to her, as she, the context of it was she was making a joke where she was putting a pillow up her shirt, and then, you know, yield titty popped out. You can't help it, I guess. But I think it more leads into the problem with Twitch inherently, where she didn't get banned because of this, while other streamers got banned for less. Like if I'm giving an example, a streamer named Michaela was streaming and then she went over to her Twitter and then on her Twitter timeline, there was a nude picture of somebody and then she got banned for three days there. So this led Twitch in a whole, you know, up in arms there of how that's inconsistent. The moderators there are inconsistent. You had people who already hated Alinity from her previous actions being like, if she breathes, she's a fuck! Then you had her fans trying to support her saying, it kind of leads to both sides going back and forth with what's going on or what's right and what's wrong, I guess. So now that I got some of this like background shenanigans out of the way there, we can really move on to what I want to get into, which is the origin of live streaming and how that really became popular. To start at the beginning, the first ever live stream was in 1993, and this was the same year that Slick Willie, aka Bill Clinton, aka the saxophone man, got elected into the Oval Office, which if you haven't seen a clip of him playing the saxophone, I'll throw that in, because it's, it's just awesome, it's kind of really cool. I don't know why I decided to show that, I just thought it was cool, and you know, really, really makes you think about what, I don't know, but it'll, it'll make you think about something, I'm sure. Carrying on, uh, 1993 Xerox Park, or I think Xerox is how you say it, I'm not 100% sure, but we're just gonna pretend I said it right. I had the first live stream. My, my dog wants to get in. I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do, I can't take this off. I, I gotta keep doing that. I don't know. What do you want me to do? All right, I can take the, I throw this over here. All right, I'm, I don't know what I'm, if I'm gonna keep that over. We'll keep going. Okay. All right, bro, you gotta, no, nah, I'm not doing this. No, all right, never mind. As I was saying, uh, Xerox Park is a research and development company, and they hosted the first ever live stream of a band called Severe Tire Damage, AKA STD. That sucks. But uh, they would perform their live band, and in the next room over, there were engineers doing big brained engineer things, making it possible to hear everything. Now, in 1993, probably not too many people tuned into it due to the amount of people that had computers, not even counting if they had internet access was only like 22%. So it wasn't a lot of people that probably watched it, but still it was a cool concept of being able to stream something live to somebody in the world at any place or anywhere. I can't let you in, bro, I'm sorry. So live streaming began to grow from there with other bands like Metallica and Rolling Stones following the footsteps. And in 1995, there was a first ever live streaming sports game and it was a baseball game. 
And so that's pretty cool. Skipping ahead to March 2007, Ustream and Justin TV were the first two live streaming platforms to really kick off in popularity. And I don't know which one of them came first, whether it was Ustream or Justin TV. So for all sake of purposes, we'll say they started at the same time. So I'll cover Ustream really quickly here. Rose the popularity due to Shiba Inus, which I feel like perfectly sums up internet culture right there. Not even for 2007, even present day there. The purpose of the family streaming the Shiba Inus was because they got new puppies and they wanted to be able to watch them while they were at work. And who would have thought that thousands of other people wanted to watch their Shiba Inus as well as them while they were at work. So Ustream got really popular from there and that really kicked it off in popularity. From there, the platform grew with predominantly politicians using it like Hillary Clinton, the lizard person, and other bands using it like the Plain White Tees who I, I don't know any other song besides Hey There Delilah, so we'll give them that. That song is not bad. So it kind of faded out after that point, and then it really came back into popularity when Charlie Sheen went on it and had an insane coke binged uh, rant on it. Yeah, no, it's radical. It's radical. And the people are doing exactly what they should be doing, which is watching me. So later Ustream was acquired by IBM and changed their name to IBM Cloud and kind of faded into non-existence after that point because I haven't heard anybody use it or anything about it after that. Now I can finally get into Justin TV, which is a crazy thing what I really like. Uh, we've got a you know, four-man team. Like... Justin TV launched in March 2007, as I previously mentioned. Hey, why is it called Justin TV? Great question, other Ryan wearing different clothes. I was about to get to that if you would have let me instead of you know being rude and interrupting me, asshole. <laughs> So it was named Justin TV because it consisted of one channel, Justin Khan, who was one of the uh, creators of the platform. And it was a 24 seven hour live stream of his life. He was the only person on it. So if you went to the website, you would only see him. When he would go to the bathroom, he would tilt the camera up. And when he would go to bed, he would place the camera so you could face him. So you're watching him 24 seven all of the time. So the camera was set up on a hat. So it was a very simple design and he would just tilt it up or tilt it down and it would just follow him and you would be looking at almost a POV of exactly everything that he was seeing. There was a chat set up so the viewers could interact with each other as they didn't have what I have here with my computer set up. So if I was streaming, I could see the chat pretty easily. He didn't have that availability as he was on the go all of the time. So he gave his number out to the viewers so they could text him and give him advice or just call him at random hours. And while that might've been a great idea in 2007, I don't think any streamer would wanna do that in present day. Like, I think they could just imagine the spam or the terrible memes that their viewers would send to them. While it was semi-popular on its own release due to the novelty of the idea, it really grew to popularity in March 21st, 2007, only a couple days after he was streaming 24 seven, where one of his viewers decided to play a prank by swatting him. So what they did was they called the police using his number and they said there was a stabbing in his apartment. So the police came and swatted his house. San Francisco police! Who's here? Can we get stabbed in the chest in here? No, no, no. Shit. Uh, Who called? Uh, no, I did not call. Nobody got hurt, luckily but something potentially could happen. Not that this is a really new concept in the Twitch community. This has happened to several other streamers even to this date, but it's really a dangerous thing as something could have went wrong and he could have died. But on the contrary to that, people eat this shit up. It's like reality TV. People love to watch like bad shit happen. And Jersey Shore, people love to watch people fight. People love, eat that shit up. They love that. They could eat that all day. So this flung him into the limelight right there. It really got popular after that point. And a lot of people were tuning in daily to see what he, see what he was doing. So this kind of made Justin also realize the form of entertainment that he had to bring to these people. He couldn't just hang out in his house and just stream whatever he wanted to do. He had to actively do something to keep these viewers' attention. So we, what he would do is go to bars, he would go on dates even with, these, with this camera on, which is really creepy and makes me uncomfortable. But watching an interview, he said he took it off at one point, so the girl didn't feel super uncomfortable all the time. But still a weird concept, but People do eat it up, so he got a bigger following from that. So the following summer of 2007, it opened up to a select people that Justin TV and his crew decided to pick. And one of these people was someone that you might know named I Justine. 
She joined the platform that summer, one of those 50 people that was handpicked by Justin TV to start live streaming also. And she's even incredibly popular today as she has millions of subscribers still. Then later in October, the website went public and grew tremendously during this by allowing anybody to make an account or to begin streaming. Some notable people that you might know that decided to do this was the Jonas brother when they were in the, uh, the Jonas brothers when they were in their Gerber stages of you know, fame and popularity, when they were still working with Disney. While the website was growing, a small subcategory of it was gaining a lot of attention and a popularity, and this was the gaming portion. And this was really, live streaming completely changed gaming, as a lot of it was you would have to just go to an arcade and see people fight, while you could just now tune into Twitch and watch people stream you know, fighting games from across the country. It was an incredibly crazy concept that really blew people away and Justin TV saw this untapped market within it and decided to you know, take a jump on this. The creators of Justin TV capitalized on this untapped market and created a sub website called Justin, gaming.justintv. And while it was very semi-popular on its own, it ended up rebranding in 2011 to Twitch. So we've come full circle here. Eventually, in February 2014, Justin TV finally closed down and said its goodbye and rebranded as Twitch Interactive overall. Since then, they became a live streaming Goliath with other websites stemming up like Microsoft's Mixer or YouTube Live or Instagram Live or any of these other websites really fell pair in comparison to Twitch and how large it is and how many people watch it. If I'm going to watch a stream, I'm probably gonna to go to twitch.tv. I, I would never really go to Mixer unless I'm watching Ninja, which I don't me, really do shit. ever, so it's not my kind of crowd. To conclude, all of this live streaming is pretty cool. It allowed people who, whether they don't have the money or the equipment to live stream and allow people to watch them, whether they play the game or whatever they decide to do for entertainment. Also, Justin really, you know, coined the term for life streaming, which is something that's incredibly popular still to this day. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I just thought it was a really cool origin story when I found out how Justin TV became Twitch TV. So I decided to really share it with all you guys. So if you enjoyed the video, uh, let me know. I know it's a little different of just making fun of cake yes, hacks yes. or kids content or some shit like that. So I hope you liked it and I'll probably make another video at some point because I'm sure this quarantine is gonna continue.